up, everybody? Welcome to the first ever Three Best Friends podcast. My name is Mike Toundro. I am joined by Matthew Wright. Am I supposed this to say, say something? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can fucking say hello. I Jesus mean, Christ. <laughs> and Jacob Palmer. Hello, Internet. I'm glad to be in your ear hole. Oh, oh, oh God. Yes. First episode, guys. Uh, it's finally. We've I'm been, feeling it. Finally. We've been working for this for a long time. Yeah. What, like two years? It's it's almost exactly two years. Yeah, almost. Because yeah. uh, shy of yeah. a month. Yeah. So if you guys don't know, uh, just the quick elevator pitch for this podcast: um, Matt, Jake, and I met two years ago at uh, Kind of Funny Live Two. Uh, I live in New York City, or just outside New York City, um, and it was the first time I flew across the country uh, totally alone. I've I've never done that before. I've never been on the West Coast, um, so I was just this, this wandering, lonely. Yanka's kid looking at the fucking Golden Gate Bridge <laughs> getting emotional when my feet touched the Pacific Ocean um, and eventually I met these two guys and we instantly hit it off um, I think safe to say I don't want to speak for you guys but we're pretty much stuck with each other for life yep yep um, there's a wedding band under my wedding band <laughs> <laughs> oh you got my name tattooed I did no oh, man see I have it Mike and Shibs one day so Matt can technically leave whenever he wants Mm. <laughs> mm, sure. um yeah then pretty much that weekend i mean i think it was that weekend that we were like yo we should just so we could talk more let's just do a podcast and we're like yeah fuck yeah let's do it and two years later <laughs> yeah no i remember that because i was on like my third carafe of uh whatever alcohol drink i was drinking and at then, the um the food truck yeah meetup um and like two other groups were talking about doing podcasts too and nothing came from those either but and yeah, I mean, the main reason, I mean, personally for me, the main reason I wanted to do this is because, I mean, these two guys live on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast, literally different time zones. I mean, we talk to each other almost every day through text, but I want to actually talk to these guys and actually catch up with them. We only ever, like, really physically hung out three times, um, only for events. So, I mean, not to get sappy already, fucking five minutes in, but I miss these guys, and... I miss hanging out with them at, for events and, like, waking up every day, going to meet up and just fucking chilling for the day. And this podcast is a way to do that remotely. So Yeah, plus, you know, text doesn't work during E3 and stuff because you guys destroy my phone. Yeah. And, <laughs> and we have to go all the way to Twitter. <laughs> God, I fucking started. hate DMing over Twitter. Oh, my God, it's the worst. Seriously. Get over it. So this actual podcast, the format for each week is going to be us talking about what games, movies, music, comics, whatever that we've read, consumed for the week. And we'll have a topic of the show um, and then followed by some questions from the audience. So with that being said, what were you guys up to this week? So I have been on a dry spell for buying records for the longest time. And then you really made short work of that, man. Oh, <laughs> I, I really made short work of that. Uh, so I got a list of all the records I I bought some of them are old some of them are newer I think one of them I think Mike and I will definitely get into a conversation about uh the first record I I bought today uh Good Tiger great band I really like them uh the album is called We Will All Be Gone and I gotta say the lead singer is Elliot Coleman and he has a phenomenal voice I love it what kind of band is that I never heard of them it's uh it's in the rockish realm, but you know how there's so many different <laughs> rock right. types. It, well, yeah. It's hard to put into like a certain category, but I highly recommend that you would listen to them. This is actually, okay. I'm actually going to give you some homework to do. So there's like a few bands I want you to listen to and then critique it like in a way or see how you like it. I know one of the bands you started listening to, like when I suggested it that I have on this yeah. list, but good tiger is definitely one of them. Uh, okay. I bought Golf Story, the vinyl, because that, yeah. that just looked amazing, especially in that super sweet green. Dude, Fangamer is a very dangerous website. It, it is. Mm-hmm. I, I logged on there. I'm like, I'm just buying Golf Story. And then they have uh, Persona 5 pins coming out for Morgana, and I pre-ordered two of those, and I said, that's it. I, I logged off the site. <laughs> I, I logged off the site because I just knew I'd just get into trouble. I had SteamWorld Dig 2 in my cart because one of my favorite games from last year and I the music is incredible. Yes. But I no, I can't. No, I, I saw that too and I'm like, nope, don't even look. Don't even I, don't I even almost touch bought it. Golf Story. Um but then I remembered that the Silent Hill 
final was released from Mondo, so my money went to that. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Do, do, I forgot about that. Oh, God. They're still doing their Castlevania series also. I'm waiting for uh, Symphony Apparently, of the but yeah, yeah everyone's yeah, waiting I mean, for Symphony. <laughs> everyone's waiting for freaking Jackal... Jack, Jackalvania. Dracula X. <laughs> Jackalvania. <laughs> like, where is it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know how Mondo is. Mondo's slow, but I mean, it's worth it. You know what I got an email on today? Uh, Last of Us is another one got put on sale. Two ninety nine. I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope. Not doing it. And then, yeah, that, uh, that was lucky for me. Yeah, I, I ended up getting that. Yeah, some people were st- are still ticked off about it because there's supposed to be like another uh, set released in like that was up for pre order, I guess, in January, not this year, but whenever it was released. Oh, I remember that. That was like the third. I, I got in on the second wave. That was the third wave. And yeah. did the third wave get canceled? The third wave. And a, a lot of people got canceled on it. I feel bad for that because people are like, I want to buy it. I'll buy it for like sub two hundred dollars but there's no way i'm paying four hundred dollars for this it's not worth it how much was it retail Uh, it was 80 yeah jesus it's a huge price up just like the persona 5 uh deluxe edition it's i've I've seen it for five hundred dollars i'm like yeah i'm glad i bought it they market the fuck up yeah they do because i mean the last of us one at least it was one pressing um it's four lps Mm -hmm. and art by ali moss yeah and that art is just beautiful absolutely beautiful yeah it's oh my god it's stunning if i find that for even if i found it for 200 dollars, i would pull the trigger instantly on it yeah. and it, it wouldn't be my first yeah. record i paid over 200 dollars for jesus I, I bought afi sing the sorrow um persona 5 was 200 dollars. so i mean yeah but I, I forgot persona 5 was that much resale it, six <laughs> six lps man <laughs> right, but there is so much music on there. I, I I love the packaging. I love the artwork with it. I think it's personally the art is great. It I think personally it was worth it because that was absolutely my favorite game of last year and my favorite yeah. soundtrack. And like Mondo, I mean there there is the I am eight bit tax. Y- yes, yeah, yes, like that quality tax. And speaking of I am, I, I I'm glad they finally released the uh, Shadow Colossus. Oh my god, on vinyl yeah. because that soundtrack has I do been need, one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I need so, I need to get that as well. I jumped on. I think that that's the quick. only one from Miami Pit that I'm like I need to get. Mm-hmm. I think it's the only one that I'm like kind of hoping it doesn't sell out. Oh, and Skyrim, I want to get. I want to get Skyrim, uh, Shadow Colossus, and then whenever they release it, the Pokemon, the Johto, uh, jo- yeah, Johto, yeah, it was supposed to come out in yeah, February. What the fuck? Yeah, that was supposed to come out February. It was like I don't know what's happened to it. I mean, it's like with them at this point. I'm just like, all right, it's paid for. It'll come yeah, eventually. It'll come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like uh, with Hyper Light Drifter, that took like yeah. a year and a half later. Oh, you know what I saw in one of the pictures from I Am 8-Bit, and I'm really sad about it. I should have texted you, Mike. You might have been able to go over there and get it for me, and I would have paid you. Um, they had uh, Owl Boy. Oh, yeah. Uh, I I did stop by their booth. I didn't see Owl Boy. And they, they posted a picture with it. It might have been a day that you weren't there. Probably. I mean, granted, I went. We'll talk about it later. But I went Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, I didn't go on the show floor. Sunday, Sunday was fucking packed. It was probably Friday because I saw that there, and I'm like, wait, you're sold out online, and uh, that's. I think that's why I didn't text you. But well, it's like somebody else had Sonic Adventure too, but on like their massive billboard, like on top of their booth. But it, they put a big sold out sticker on top of, of it. Course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and I got that yeah. shit cheap. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Here, fucking here, sold out everywhere now. Here, here's the thing I'm going to bring up. So, Mike and I, we <laughs> love to share links. We love to tell you when there's a great deal. Does Matt do that? I no. did. No, 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 no. Matt, what you did was you sent a screenshot. Look what I got, and the deal was dead. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. yeah. But in my defense, that was like like 3 a.m. It was going to be dead before you guys even woke up. I don't give a shit. 3 a.m. for you is 6 a.m. for me, where I wake up for work. <laughs> um, anyways I, what else did you buy all right so <laughs> you and i i think we both pre-ordered this one some 41 does this look infected for the yep. src uh, exclusive and then yeah. i sent you a picture of this one some 41 chuck and i'm glad i found that one found the last one and one that actually two of them that came out today breaking benjamin ember and then i ordered a uh, baby driver volume two Nice. Mm. I totally didn't realize there was a new Breaking Benjamin album today. Dude, I heard uh, I, I it must have been like in my girlfriend's car, but like she was listening to Sirius XM or whatever, and they yeah. were pimping a new Breaking Benjamin song. I was like, oh shit, they're still, oh yeah, they're still at it, huh? Dude, that uh, I knew they were touring. Also, that song "Red Cold River" 
freaking amazing. And then if you watch the music video with it, it's just it it drags on your heart a little bit. It, like it tugs it tugs on your heart a little bit. So maybe I'll listen to it on the way home tonight. It's a really good song. Uh, the one band I talked to you about before, Icarus the Owl, uh, Rearm Circuits, yep. great album. That that was a surprise album for me. Where I was like, I was looking at this Instagram account. Uh, Mike, you would love this account. Uh, his name is a Jake to the Past. He took all these albums that like he loved and he like he made a whole 2017 thing, and I, that's how I found a bunch of bands that I didn't really listen to as well. So I went nice. through his and I was like, all right, let me see if this sounds like I would listen to it. And then Icarus the Owl was like, whoa! I think that was my all time favorite album of last year. It just hit me like when I was like trying to find different music, and that just that that was really good. Um, yeah, I mean, Enter Shikari was awesome as well so i can't that was my album of the year last year yeah i think icarus just squeaks it out for me just a little bit but enter shikari's like number two and then the wonder years sister cities so the first up matt do you know wonder years i do not i know the tv show <laughs> uh well tell me what you think of it jake when i first listened to it i was like well this is different so i continued to listen to it and i actually thought it was like a good album but this is also my first time listening to the wonder years so that, that might have been a different take for me. So probably for you, who's, I don't know how long you've been a fan of theirs for. So here's the thing. I was never crazy about them. Okay. They just, I know they're, they're super popular. I know I'm totally in the minority for this. Mm -hmm. Um, I like some of their past singles. Mm -hmm. uh, If I'm remembering correctly, because I mean, I just fucking listened to it today because I had a feeling we were going to talk about this. Um, Some of the past singles are a little more pop punk, which I like. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sister Cities to me is not pop punk enough. No. It goes a little more rock, yeah. which is fine. I will say I do love the title track, Sister Cities. Yep. I think it's a brilliant song. Yep. Um, it's been stuck in my head since they released it a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and it got me really excited for the album. But yeah. yeah, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me. And again, I know I'm in the minority for that. But because I mean, everybody in my circle is going crazy over it. But I just, yeah. I, I'm not like going crazy over it yeah totally but i honestly love it i would recommend it i maybe it's because that's where i fall in line with music where i'm just like i like the the rock i'm not a true punk head but i'm getting there <laughs> and i mean i could tell with your music taste with like chevelle and breaking benjamin and stuff like that that's right where you kind of lie mm-hmm. rather than me i'm definitely like a pop punk kid at heart right i mean it's like the best parts of pop punk and rock like just straight up rock but i don't know it's something about it doesn't click for me and just to throw that out there something that i didn't think would click with me but actually did uh hoopa stinks new song hoopa stink! i didn't think <laughs> i listened to it and i'm like all right this is a little different it's a little poppy a little a little different but i thought it was good <laughs> i didn't listen to it yet <laughs> <laughs> give it a listen i don't think you'll like it but I, I would be interested to hear what you say about it. There's a lot of, like, random-ass singles from, like, people I haven't heard of from since, like, fucking the early 2000s coming out lately. Like, Hoopastank, fucking Blue October has a new album coming out. Arctic Monkeys? Like, what the... Well, that's that's different. I know, but I know they're amazing. Don't get me wrong. It's just... Oh, yeah. Once, once I saw that tweet from you, I was like, what? <laughs> and then the other one I listened to today where I was like, where the fuck did this come from? Uh, Kid Cudi has a new song. Wait, what? What? <laughs> so this is going to be broken down in three parts. <laughs> Kid Cudi has a new song. It's the only song on the Rampage soundtrack <laughs> other, other than the score. <laughs> uh, and it samples Smashing Pumpkins uh, fucking, I forgot the name of the song, fucking uh, whatever. The, it samples, despite all my rage, I'm still oh just God. a rat in the cage. That's the chorus with like Kid Cudi going, uh, yeah. I'm like, all right, I get it. Rage, Rampage. Cool. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> bullet with butterfly wings. Is that what it's called? I, I wanted to say that, but that's also a hymn song. Oh my god! Him. No, him, the hymn song is "Wings of a Butterfly." Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that brings back high school Jesus. memories. Yeah, I haven't heard about him in over ten years. <laughs> Dude, I went to their final show, their final U.S. show a yeah. couple months ago. Fucking cried. Yeah. <laughs> but damn, you bought a lot recently. Yeah, you, you bought that. a lot in one day. Two days. Dude, especially for fucking record store day next week. Yeah, I, I'm not looking forward to that. I'm glad, like, I don't actually go out and get, like, all these, like, actual artists uh, LPs and stuff like mm-hmm. that, whereas you guys do. So, Record Store Day isn't, like, a huge, like, oh, shit moment for me. But, 
you unfortunately guys, is for us. You guys have fun. <laughs> you know, you'd be surprised in how much stuff that we're buying that isn't an actual, like, it's an actual, like, composing and, mm. like, soundtrack or something like that. Because it's, yeah. it's something there, that's just... There is one that I found just when I was um, buying an LP. Um, the uh, High Fidelity uh, soundtrack, there was a Record Store oh, nice. Day version yeah. that has an orange vinyl. I'm like, oh... That's oh, sick. I want that. The first record store day I participated in, uh, I grabbed. I, f- I forgot what color it is. I don't know what the. I forgot the actual variant details, but um, the Empire record soundtrack. Oh, mm. nice! It was fucking awesome. I actually picked up an, not on record store day, but I I went into my record store that had like leftovers. It had the um, gunmetal John Wick soundtrack. <laughs> Ooh, nice! <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> That's I'm cool. like, it was like on sale for like 15 bucks. I'm like, yeah. I'll do it. That's that's the cool thing. I mean, I want to save Record Store Day for like an actual topic, maybe next week. Oh yeah. But that's the coolest thing about Record Store Day is just like, yeah, you have your ones that you. I mean, we'll talk. Me and Jake will talk about our routines for the holiday. But you have the things that you're aiming for, but then you find something you're just like ridiculous, like a John Wick gun metal thing. You're just yeah. like, eh, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. It's like <laughs> why not? Why not? It. Yeah. Especially like I. I'm not too well known for this Record Store Day. Like I just started last year. Sorry. It, yeah. Yeah. No. This this <laughs> this whole topic right here is now going into one topic that is thanks a lot for my ginormous debt into vinyl. <laughs> like you're welcome. Like I think. I mean, you're happier now, right? Oh, definitely. Like I love just sitting down and just listening to the music. Like it's a it's a better way to listen to the music for me, especially like you can just go about playing video games and listening to the new record. And be like, oh yeah, I like that record, but it's like you didn't yeah. really truly listen to it. Right. At all. So Yeah, you're fucking welcome. Yeah. So no, I, I love this. It's <laughs> it's been great and just sitting down and I remember sitting down with the first record that I played was this Journey soundtrack uh from I Am Eight Bit. And that record My brain instantly oh my went God. to the band Journey. Oh I know. I that's why I had to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The the soundtrack for the game, the great game, Journey. Uh just sitting down and listening to all four records just in like one yeah. sitting was just Phenomenal! I, I think that was my first I Am Ape purchase. Yeah, I that bought was... that along with the uh, Johto final, so I'm still waiting for mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bad thing about I Am Ape. If you like buy, let's say, three things at once or two things at once, you have to wait for the last thing to get released. Yep. Right, but like later this year when the um, new Uncharted vinyl comes out, like I have all the Uncharted vinyls coming with that, so that'll be a good day. I have the rest of the Uncharted vinyl, but I I didn't get Lost Legacy for some reason. I didn't get Uncharted 4 yet, which that that is going to be a purchase soon. But I will get Lost Legacy as well. Of which, um, when I let you guys know, um, I'm pretty sure Bioware is having a sale in their store until, like, the ramp up for, um, what's their new game? Anthem? Anthem. Um, Because, yeah, they have a sale on almost, er like, everything in the store. So I think they're trying to get rid of all their inventory before Anthem comes out. Mm. So the Mass Effect Trilogy vinyl is still half off. Um, and that's a four time. I didn't even know they got pressed. I hate you. Yeah, so it's there's a separate one for Andromeda, but I, I don't that's know. That's okay. Really. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I played that game for 20 minutes and I quit because I got stuck and got killed. And I was like, yeah. well, I'm not doing it. But yeah, so I, I uh, recently gave Mass Effect another shot. The first one, I was like, nah, I can't do it. Ah, oh, see, the, see, yeah, the first. I know those ones I, are good. I hate the ending of three, but I, it just doesn't hold up well for me. It's hard going back to a, an old game that you never played before, right? If you played it before, it has the nostalgia. Exactly. Like fucking, I played Sonic Adventure two like a couple Ooh. weeks ago. I was like, fuck yeah, this feels great. <laughs> it does not. It like in reality is the most clunky yeah, fucking game yeah, in the is, world. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> So, Mike, I know you want to talk about music as well. Yeah, just piggybacking off of you. Um, I specifically want to talk about three bands. Albums came out last week for. First is Kississippi. Pretty much Mississippi with a K mm-hmm. in the front. Uh, they're a Philly band. It's just like super dirty, raw, DIY pop punk. And her voice is just so pure and just like the lyrics are super authentic and it just sounds so great. I've been like stuck on that record all week. Just to stop you right there. When you posted the picture of Kississippi, I instantly thought this was going to be like a Josh Groban esque type album because of the way the picture you would looked. Think. It, it looks like that. And it is the exact opposite. But for, 
for the new album, right? The the pink. Yeah, yeah. Album art. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I thought it was something like that. I'm like, I'm not listening to that. And then so I came across them like late last year. Uh, they signed to this record label, Side One Dummy, who I've I've been obsessed with Side One Dummy like all of <laughs> like late 2016, all of 2017. Just, they've just been killing it on the, the new music front. Like Jeff Rosenstock's two new records are fucking incredible. Um, Roswell Kid put out a great record. Smith Street Band put out a great record. Like, Psy One Dummy was getting on top of their game. And then late last year, they signed this band, Kississippi. So I was like, naturally, oh shit, Psy One Dummy Band, I gotta check them out. Well, on Spotify, they only had, uh, they put out a new single with the announcement, and then they had like a demo EP out on Spotify, plus like a live session. The single they put out was fantastic. It, it's on the record also. It's called Cut Your Teeth. It's just so raw and catchy, and she just sounds. I don't know. There's just something about it that like you just really want to listen to it. Like you you keep bobbing your head and stuff to the music, but like eventually you just listen to the lyrics and just listen to what she's saying. It's like, oh fuck, <laughs> yeah, it's really good. But um, they signed to Side One, um, and then late last year, like December ish, Side One just kind of let go of all their employees. Oh, um, other than like two people, I think. Um, this didn't come into light until kind of recently. But the first sign of this was their big act, Jeff Rosenstock. He released a surprise record on New Year's uh, through a new label, Polyvinyl, which I found really weird. But I was like, cool, whatever. You're doing your thing. You're probably growing out of the more indie, like quote unquote, indie scene. You want to, you know, expand. Cool. But yeah, this story came out and then pretty much said, like, yeah, they fired everybody. They kind of lost all their heart. And like him, Chris Farron, uh, a couple other acts. They said they're they're currently fighting. Not fighting. I I, I don't want to like talk about what I don't really know, but they're they're attempting to get the rights to all like their backlog back because Jeff also has a second band with Chris Farron called I always butcher the fucking name, but uh, Antarctico Vespucci. I want to say, um, very good. Uh, but they apparently recorded a new album last year and it's just held up in rights. Like it's just waiting to get the rights back to get released, and that sucks. So I was worried that uh, the same thing was going to happen with Kississippi. Like, I was looking forward to this record so much, and I heard nothing about this album, and I just thought they were in label hell, just waiting for legal rights to get cleared up. But then, not last week, but the week before, no, no, last week, on Thursday, I just randomly looked at their Twitter, and... I saw they retweeted somebody saying like, oh my God, I can't wait for the new album, blah, blah, blah. And I just fucking realized that it was coming out the next day. And I was like, oh shit, when the fuck did this happen? And then I dug in a little deeper. Uh, they got out of their contract with Side One. So I think they're independent now. But um, yeah, they got the album out. Um, yesterday, they actually just put up the uh, the physical pre-order. Um, so I grabbed that. That's coming out in June, I believe. So how much of a missed opportunity, though, is the name Kississippi that it's not... A Kiss cover band in the style of Prudence. I clear 100% about. guarantee that that band exists. <laughs> there has to be. Oh, it needs to. Um, I need that in my life. <laughs> but no, that, that record is phenomenal. And then this band, Hop Along, uh, put out a new record. Uh, the same day as the Kississippi record. I found out about them through Kississippi. They tweeted something. They said, like, hey, check this record out. It's really good, blah, blah, blah. If Kississippi is, like, raw, like, garage pop punk, Hop Along is more tamed studio like indie pop with that same raw emotional vocal just like raspy kind of voice um another female-led pop punk band i've been stuck on that record for the past two days and it's just so good i i I can't really like express into words like how good it is i don't know what it is like i don't know what it's doing so differently but it's just it gets its hooks in you um Mm. so much so that they're i think playing it sometime in may in brooklyn i like i i'm probably gonna grab tickets for it after this podcast and i just really want to see that emotion live same with kiss mississippi they're they're supporting some band i don't even like but i totally want to go to the show just to see them play like a half hour set then the last band not a pop punk band i promise um this band west meets west uh west meets west is a band that i'm personally friends with the like front uh, quote unquote front man uh it's they're a post-rock band who they don't really sing everybody's kind of equal so it's kind of hard to you can't really say like front man or lead singer or anything like that because there's no vocals and there's not really a front man 
But uh, the main dude, Sam Soff, uh, he was my old boss back in the old uh, studio I used to work at. He pretty much taught me everything I know about audio engineering and recording and influenced the music that I like very much. Um, I love that dude so much. I have so much. I owe him so much and have to thank him for so much. Like, whatever. I'm tired. I can't. I'm just rambling now. <laughs> um, you fucking get it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they put out a new album last week. Uh, he, I was lucky enough that he gave it to me last December, <laughs> so I've been listening to it since late last year. That's but the one it, that you were talking about that you could, Yeah, that's okay. the one. Uh, yeah, I got it December... I got it after we got home from PSX, so I got right. it like December like 12th or something. Yeah, and I wanted you to spill the beans. I wanted you to like share it with me. <laughs> so they, they just got signed to a label, so I, I was kind of under NDA. I, I don't think I was right. supposed to really say anything. Right. So, I mean, I'm sure he wouldn't have mind. I'm sure it was like whatever, but I didn't want to risk it because I didn't know. But at the same time, you would have never, nobody would ever know who it was in regards to. Yeah. But like all I wanted to do with them, they, they're just so fucking good and not enough people listen to them. Uh, it's just, it's straight up post rock. If you guys don't know what post rock is, it's literally crazy guitar melodies and crazy leads and sometimes mm-hmm. synthy stuff, crazy drums, but no vocals. Yep. Very, it's kind of like ambient, but more rocky. So their new album is officially out uh, on their new label. It's out on vinyl. It's out on CD. Please go fucking support it because I've been trying to champion that record for the past six months <laughs> and I couldn't say a fucking word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then kind of last minute side note, literally two hours ago, I went to go see this movie called You Were Never Really There. Oh, I want to see that so bad. So yeah, uh, it's the new Joaquin Phoenix movie. Music related. Uh, the score is fucking awesome. It's like synth hip-hop with a live orchestra wow composed by johnny greenwood of radiohead oh wow wow um he's done he did a lot of the paul thomas anderson movies like he recently did phantom thread and stuff like Mm -hmm. that but score is fucking dope and i kind of want to pick it up it's got pressed through lakeshore records and i kind of want to pick it up um just quick like elevator pitch for the movie the movie is uh art house taken (laughs) uh and it's great that's awesome I'm taking one, taking two, or taking three? Ah, I'm taking one. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a serious question at all. <laughs> I know. And then just to wrap up my little music stuff, uh, I do have some breaking news. One of my favorite bands of all time, Taking Back Sunday, uh, the founding member, Eddie Reyes, is leaving the band. Ooh. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, he's literally the only original member. Right. Or he he was the only original member. Because even right. Adam and John and all them, like, they came in afterwards. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to just stick with just John and uh, Adam's brother being on guitar. If you take out, this is my view on any bands. If you take out a lead singer and switch it with someone else, you have to change the name of that band. Hey, okay, wait. You know what? Well, I, I disagree. Um, well, Van, hold on, hold Van, on. Eddie, Eddie's the guitarist, not lead singer. Uh, oh, that's... Oh, Jesus. Duh. Just, just clarifying. <laughs> Duh. I don't want you to get ripped apart. Yeah, no, no. Totally <laughs> forgot about, about that. Happen, I, don't yeah. why, I don't know why I thought about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I don't know why I assumed that he was lead singer. I don't know but, why. But Whatever. to your point, Jake, I will say this. Van Halen, like... They they replaced the lead singer, and, you know, you have two, two different Van Halens, it's... It's the same name, but, like, two very different bands. There are some, like, yeah, you can keep the same. It's just, it's so weird, because, I don't know, the one it's I tough. think of, the one I think of instantly, Three Days Grace. I All was right? just going to say that. You change the lead singer, that lead singer is not even remotely close to Adam. I believe his name was Adam. Um, yeah, Adam. But you have that new lead singer, I'm like, I can't listen to Three Days Grace now. Like, that is, that's not Three Days Grace to me at all. I, I don't know. There's just there's some instances where I think you need to change the name. But to play devil's advocate, the only I mean, recent example, and granted this is a rough example, but um, Blink One Eight Two recently. Yeah, yeah. I was actually going to talk about that too. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like yeah, Tom was he was like a lead singer in a way, but he also yeah. had Mark at the same time. So it's like that one's tough. But I, I do see the devil's advocate in that way. Yeah. I mean, personally, I if anybody was going to replace Tom, I think Matt is fucking perfect. Oh, agree. Especially seeing them live. That was just awesome. Yeah. And I think California is a fucking brilliant record. I know, like, the hardcore Blink-182 fan base will probably rip me apart for that. But, like... But here's the thing, though. Neighborhoods... Tom was, Tom was fucking fading. Yeah. Tom like, was not good at the end. No. 
he was he not. He was the whole reason I didn't want to listen to the revival of Blink-182. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like, I I mean, you guys know me personally, like, I have a Blink-182 tattoo. The self-titled album is integral to my upbringing in, like, music culture and what I do for a living. Yeah. I have nothing but love and respect for Tom. But after the, the revival, I remember they their debut performance was on uh, The Tonight Show, mm-hmm. and Tom sounded fucking horrendous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. And then, like, I saw him live a few times after that. And, like, seeing him live, it's different. You're just really excited and giddy and stuff. But, like, afterwards, like, during some certain performances, and, like, even if you were, like, filming it or whatever, and you, like, look at your phone afterwards to see, like, what, you know, just to, like, relive the moments or whatever, it doesn't sound good. No. It sounds like shit. And Matt sounds fucking awesome. And he nails the old songs. And, like, yeah, it's not pure Blink or whatever. Sure, whatever. But to me, Blink is not really the members. Blink is that heart. Mm-hmm. Like, Neighborhoods didn't have heart. No, it did not. California is a fun record. Like, they clearly had a lot of fun recording that. Yeah. And most of the songs I liked on Neighborhoods, Tom didn't sing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like, granted, with, like, recording software and whatnot, you can make the voice a little better. Like, there was parts of Neighborhoods I did enjoy. Right. But, yeah. No, it it was weird. I mean, the whole record was recorded really weird. I mean, I think Mark and Travis were in L.A. and Tom was in San Diego and they were just remote recording. Yeah, exactly. Which they that's, could, that's not they, how you make a record. No, they couldn't even be together. All right. All right, guys. I don't think you're ready for this. So, this last weekend, I went up to Portland to spend time with my girlfriend's family. And while we were waiting before we were going to play Scrabble, which, yeah, spoiler alert, turns out we didn't have Scrabble, so we played something else. Um, uh, her father put on uh, a movie that he had never seen before. And, like, I'm just hearing, like, the opening music and stuff before the actual uh, title comes up. I'm like, did you fucking put on Cocktail? Because, like, I've always seen bits and pieces of this movie. And for n- people that don't know, it's a early Tom Cruise movie. It's uh, 1988. He put on Cocktail. <laughs> and it's just uh, my girlfriend's mother, father, and myself downstairs. And I cracked open a beer because he just put on Cocktail. This is one of the worst, in quote-unquote, movies I have ever seen. Like, I had never actually sat down and watched this movie from start to finish. This movie is a glorified commercial for Tom Cruise. Because every single scene in the movie is just like, all right, you have to hit these notes, there has to be... It's a story in each scene. Because you have the conflict, you have, you know, the rise and the fall, and then you go to a new scene. And it's ridiculous. (laughs) Like... The story sounds like a fucking Tom Cruise casting tape. <laughs> the story, if we can call it that, uh, Tom Cruise plays this dude that's a bartender. It's supposed to be part time. Uh, he's in school trying to get a business degree, um, but he has like this dude, like this. I think he's Australian mentor that's also a bartender with him. So like they get into a lot of sticks and stuff like that, and they get really good at becoming bartenders or whatever. So it's like. I mean, all right, so this is just a bartending movie now. Like, we, we don't even need the scene that was in there that he was in business school making fun of the teacher. They get into a scuffle over a woman, which was the most asinine thing that happened. It's just, it was a bet, basically. And Tom, Tom Cruise loses, so he's like, fuck you, I'm out of here, basically. Three years passes. <laughs> and Tom Cruise is in Jamaica bartending trying to raise money trying to still open up this uh, bar of his dreams and this dude this dude follows him like, wait pause for a sec <laughs> what uh did he graduate business school at this point no one knows that 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 thread's gone okay like it didn't need to be in the movie at all i i just love the fact that he didn't have enough money to start up this bar but he had enough money to move to jamaica uh, yeah um, but this dude, uh, I think his name's Doug, followed him. Like, he's there. Like, he's married to this wealthy woman who hits on everyone. Um, and he's egging him on at the bar now and saying, like, oh, you can't get this uh, woman who appears to be wealthy as well, older woman. And he's like, you know what? Fuck it. Completely uh, disregarding, like, the whole scene before where, like, he's in love with this other girl, like, who are dating and have an actual, like, love life. And he's like, fuck it. Goes off, they have sex, the woman sees it, because of course she does. Immediately the next morning, they have to turn this around because, wait, we can't have him be the bad guy. Like, it's Tom Cruise, he has to be the victim in all this, right? So he feels bad. He goes, tries to find this other girl who's played by Elizabeth Shue, 
she goes back to New York without telling him. So, like, he's feeling real shitty. And then this wealthy woman comes back, finds his house, you know, like, they have sex. Like, all right. And then his buddy's like, hey, how about you come work with me? And he's like, no, I'm going to go back to New York with this wealthy woman. I'll be made. It'll be all good. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> so, now they're in New York. Uh, he doesn't really have to work at all because he's dating this wealthy woman. It, like, it seemed like it only passed, like, a week. But it had to be a lot more because, like, they get in a uh, fight at, like, an art show because this dude's, like, kind of being a dick to him. So he punches him. It's the artist and, like, breaks some of his artwork. Which, if you watch the movie, you will notice destruction of art is an ongoing theme in this movie. But It's fucking deep, man. So they're talking outside of this, uh, um, oh, damn it, whatever the word is for an art show, like, the actual place that they do that at. Um, uh, an art show. A gallery. Um <laughs> And he's like, I moved all my stuff out. I'm leaving you. But it had to be longer in the week because this woman's reactions are like, no, we're in love and stuff like that. I'm like, what just happened? There was no character development between these two other than they had sex. And now, like, they're in love? Like, how long was it since we saw them last? Just, uh... Love in the movies don't matter. Like, the timeline doesn't no. matter. The Last Jedi fucking proved that. Oh, uh, we're, not, <laughs> we're not touching that. <laughs> Continue. Uh, so... He goes back to just working, like, being a bartender or whatever. But he's trying to get back in Elizabeth Shue's good graces. She's working as a waitress somewhere. And there's a very cute um, uh, restaurant scene where, like, she gives him the specials. But, like, by giving him the specials, like, she's just throwing it in his face and putting it on his hair and stuff like that. Yeah, she's giving him the specials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like... <laughs> He, he goes back to his old friend, we're like, hey man, yeah, like, I, I could use, like, a good job working with you, and, like, his friends just plaster and tell him, like, oh, I'm finished, like, it's all gonna be over soon, yada yada, and then, um, his wife is like, Tom Cruise, can you drive me, can you drive me home? Like, he can't, he's like, no, you can take a cab, like, no, no, you really need to drive me home. So, this next scene where she's hitting on him and trying to, uh, have sex with him, the music that's playing sounds like somebody's about to be murdered! Like, what? What? Like, you're on the edge of your seat. Like, what's what's about to happen? Like, is she going to kill him? Is, like, she going to kill herself? What's going on? Nothing happens. <laughs> He's like, no, I, I can't do this. Like, there's a catch chair between them. But no, you're married to my best friend. He goes back to the yacht that his best friend was drinking at. Dude kills himself in the, the most violent way you can think of. He breaks this $500 bottle of whiskey and gouges his neck out. Oh, and it's like, what? <laughs> That's like not even really like killing yourself. That's literally murdering yourself. Yeah. Like just out of the fucking blue. Like what? And then so trying to make Tom Cruise the victim, he goes running back to Elizabeth Shue like, I don't have anything. My best friend's dead. Like she's pregnant with his baby. With the dude that killed himself or Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise. Okay. She's like, no. And like her father tries to pay him off like, hey, leave her alone. He's like, no, I love her. And then the fucking bellboy dude get, gets in a scuffle with Tom Cruise. And then she's like, no, I love him. Hits the bellboy. Bellboy is like trying to fuck her up. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> then you, you cut forward like a few months. She's super pregnant. Hit, Tom Cruise. How many fucking time jumps are in this goddamn movie? I, Tom Cruise, his uncle, uh, gives him money to open up his own bar. Like finally, what? Like, couldn't you just <laughs> done that in the beginning of the fucking movie? But then you wouldn't have anything to talk about. And then Tom sure. Cruise like tells this very like sexist poem about like if he has a daughter, like you know, like eh, you can't do Could anything. Gouge neck out of the bottle. Yeah, <laughs> but, like if he has a boy, like he'll be as rowdy he can be. But what can he do? And then Louis Bichu like, oh, we're having twins. He's like, what, twins. It's like drinks on the house, and then his uncle's like, "Hey, hey, hey, hey! You owe me money. You can't do that." And the movie ends. He's like, what the fuck? You have to watch that movie. Like, it's the, one of the best movies. I can honestly say this to watch this with friends over drinks or just hanging out because the entire time you will just be laughing. Just the lack of plot and the weird scoring. That that whole scene with the fucking best friend's wife and the score is like. Literally, if you put that over anything else, like, you'd expect somebody's about to be murdered. You know this kind of, you know, what I thought of when you're describing this plot is a blank check. <laughs> I don't know why. 
but it just reminded me of the plot of Blank Check. Except in Blank Check, I don't remember a guy slitting his throat out. <laughs> right, yeah, I don't remember any murder. Like, there were, there were like, you know, threats. Like, yeah, hey, oh, you yeah. store money. Oh, but, tons like, of threats. Yeah. It was Sinbad. Like, it was good times. Right. Fuck, it was Sinbad. <laughs> it was. So I believe it is time for the topic of the show, Mike. Yeah. Yes. So... I didn't really clarify this at the top of the show, but uh, so we're going to do rotating hosts each week, um, and whoever's hosting is going to bring a topic for us to talk about. Uh, So I'm hosting this week. So my topic is uh, PAX East 2018. I went last week. That's the topic. (laughs) All right, that was a good talk. Thank you for joining us this week. (laughs) Um, So I I just want to treat this like an AMA. Um, I guess I'll just talk about my adventures and feel free to cut in whatever so, you want where was pax east this year <laughs> the same place it is every <laughs> yeah, year my friend. that's <laughs> news to me I, like i don't i don't go to the east coast that often so <laughs> uh so pax east is in boston boston home, um home boston. of the yankees boston <laughs> so boston. being in new york so i've never been to boston before because my father god rest his soul always terrified me that like i would get the shit beat out of me for being a yankee fan <laughs> so i never went i was like fuck okay. that place yeah no offense to any Boston people, but no, fuck that place. <laughs> yeah. No, I went there for a high school tri- field trip. Um, that was our senior trip. It was Boston, and I was legit scared. And I was like, yeah. make, make sure not to pack any Yankee stuff. And uh, So, it's funny just, you say that. So, like, yeah. I was going to bring a Yankee hat just to be a dick. Y- you know. <laughs> no, I know. But when I got there, so, I'll get to that. So, yeah. the plan was me and my girlfriend, Kelsey, were going to catch a w- fucking early as fuck bus uh, a Greyhound from White Plains, New York to Boston. And and how many hours was that? Fucking six. Oh. Six hours whatever. I could do that. But six hours, two days in a row? No. So like the plan was go early as fuck on Saturday, spend the day at the convention on Saturday, hang out later whatever, and then spend Sunday like roaming around the city or whatever and then catching the bus home at 6pm. Uh, in hindsight, that was, like, the worst fucking plan because, I mean, as you guys know, doing, like, PSX and stuff, you can't do conventions in one day. Like, you just, you can't play everything. You can't no. see the entire floor. You can't hit all the booths you want. I don't know why I thought one day would be fine. <laughs> but, yeah, get there on Saturday. Uh, we literally, I think we get there, at like, noon-ish on Saturday. Uh, literally run to the Airbnb, drop our bags off, run to our friend Kaylee and Zyger's hotel room, and then we just kind of wait for them to get ready. Uh, we end up getting to PAX at, like... We get there at like two, maybe, and then I, once we got in, didn't really do anything. <laughs> like we immediately, we were told that uh, Joey Noel of Kind of Funny was doing a panel, uh, so we just pretty much go wait in line for the panel. Um, panel was great. The panel was for this organization called Take This, and with that, I want to insert a question that we got from Twitter uh, from Kyle Stevenson, one of my favorite fucking people in the world, host of the podcast Best Friends Talk Funny. Please go listen to that. It's um, great. It's really fucking great. I was on one episode. I'm sure these guys will be on episodes in the future. Um, so Kyle asks, I want to know about the Take This panel and how the imposter syndrome affected you. I know how huge of an impact it made on me. So Take This is uh, a nonprofit organization that provides support and education about mental health disorders and illness prevention. Um, and they reduce the stigma surrounding mental health. And it was pretty much a panel just discussing how to deal with self-doubt. Um, mm-hmm. What Kyle's mentioning, uh, or what Kyle mentioned, the imposter syndrome. I'm probably going to butcher this, but pretty much like, like let's say, let's take my job, for example. You keep doubting yourself, and you think you're not good enough. So you push yourself to do more, more, more. And you think, like, your success is led to pure luck. So you keep trying, like, oh, no, this is just lucky. I got to, like, force mm-hmm. myself to do better. And you succeed again, but you're like, no, that's just luck. Yeah, whatever. And you just keep pushing yourself more and more and more and more to the point where it's like kind of unhealthy. I mean, you guys, a main reason this podcast was delayed so much is because 2018 for me, I took on, I want to say I took on four short films, one feature length film and a couple other like small musical projects, pretty much like a year, a year and a half's worth of work crammed into two months. Um, mainly because of this, because like I always think that I'm not like good enough. I need to prove myself. Um, and I know I I don't. I mean, 
I know I'm, I'm not to sound like a dick, but I, I know I'm good at what I do, but I took on all these projects anyway to like, and, and for free, like granted, I didn't get really paid for any of these other than one maybe. And I was working like fucking 14 to 16 hour days for like two or three months straight up until recently. I mean, this is, the, I thank God cleared all those up and that's the reason we're able to record this podcast now. But when he described that fucking syndrome, I literally sat, I was like mouth agape, just like, Oh fuck. That's, that's me. And yeah, it was just, it, it made me realize that I need to fucking take care of myself. Mm-hmm. So like literally these pa- like after packs, like this whole week I've work is kind of slow. Um, we are we're kind of on spring break right now. So I've been taking it super easy at work. I've actually left on time, which is nice all week. I, I get home, I go in bed, I play a game or listen to music or I read and that's it. Like I'm not even turning on my laptop. I'm not worried about work at all. Once I'm home, I yeah. just, I feel way better about myself. No, it's, it's great because I'm actually on their website right now and they have yeah. so many different categories of content that they talk yes. about. It's Dude, they're, amazing. They're like, seriously fantastic. I mean, yeah. they're, so yeah, their, their website is take this.org. Um, they're on Patreon. They take donations through their website. Please go check them out, support them. They do incredible work. I mean, they do Twitch stream a lot. Um, they work with other streamers. Uh, please go check it out. It, it's a really important cause. I mean, they have a ton of sponsors too. A ton like of sponsors. Community. They do tons of streams to benefit mental disorder awareness. But yeah, no, that panel is fantastic. Uh, so like we got out of that panel, we met up with Joey uh, just to say hi and stuff, and you know to see what's going on for later, which we'll get to like hanging out afterwards. Uh, by the time the panel was over, uh, I think the show floor was fucking closing in fifteen minutes. Of course. <laughs> so, and keep in mind, uh, me and Kelsey only bought a badge for Saturday. Oh man. <laughs> so, so during the panel, I, I just typed on my phone. I was like, "Hey, we should look into buying a badge for Sunday because we're not gonna get to do shit." Yeah. And she agreed. <laughs> so we we quickly go on the show floor, just like scope the thing out, just to see what it looks like at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we headed back to the front where there was the ticketing windows or the ticketing booths. Um, There's no place to buy in the actual convention, so I went on their website. And lucky us, Sunday sold out. Oh, wow. Um, but then we realized uh, on Saturday, um, if you guys have never been to a convention before, usually you get these badges and... They you literally have to scan in, yeah. Uh, usually with like iPads or they have like a kiosk. Like for New York Comic Con, they have a kiosk that you actually scan into. Right. Um, I was yes, expecting that for PAX, and I had my badge around my neck and I was waiting to scan in and stuff. They didn't check badges. Oh, like I went through security and you were in. Like so, it's like that's PSX. It. Like as long as you have the thing. Well, um, kind of. Well, PSX right. we had a we scan in. Yeah, you scan it, and it tells you what days you're going. Yeah. This place, you don't scan. Right. Or, like, I think they were supposed to, but I think it was just so many well, people there. They well, were no, just like, PSX, fuck it. like, you, you have to do that initially, like, when you go to pick up your stuff, but you don't have to scan in after that. Uh, Not that I'm like trying you to, you know, tell people how to rig the system. But yeah, no, no, please <laughs> no. buy tickets. Like, yeah, buy a ticket. I think they actually look at your badge, though. They make you flip it around. I think because mine was actually flipped and they needed to see what days. Right. There are people who actually check the badge. Like, they don't scan them, but they check the badges. I'm thinking right. of, like, scanning for, like, the fucking codes and shit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. But for New York Comic Con, at least, like, they have people in the all exits with iPads and, like, kiosks right. and stuff that you have to scan in and you have to scan out. Yeah. Um, this place didn't do that. So, being the terrible people that we are, <laughs> Kelsey and I were like, uh, maybe we should just try tomorrow. But we'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah. I do want to touch on this um, whole thing um, about the imposter syndrome and stuff like that. And go for it. I do want to tell you, like, yes, there there's organizations like that, but also, you know, there's if you have friends out there and you feel anything like this, just reach out, talk to them, and if they're not That's... a dick. They will tell you, like, no, dude, like, you are fantastic at what you like. Like, if Mike had asked us, we'd be like, dude, we can't do what you do. Like, Not even close. <laughs> you're fucking fantastic at this shit. Um, huh? And it's anything like that. I, I went through something similar at the fucking job I had to jettison back in January. It's just, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you put in the hard work, and sometimes you don't have people that actually back you up and you know, that you are doing a good job. Hopefully there are those people in your life, but if there's not reach out first to those before like 
there's definitely sites like this and stuff that can help you, but usually more often than not, you will have somebody in your ranks that will help you out. Yeah. And don't be scared about speaking up. Like, don't be embarrassed about anything. Mm-hmm. So many people go through yeah, the same like exact thing. Everybody goes through the shit. Yeah. Like, to some degree. Like, and it, it's great to talk to someone it. who's gone through it but and has more knowledge mm-hmm. about it. It's yeah. so helpful. Because you kind of feel isolated until you talk to somebody. You're like, oh, I'm not alone. Yeah. This is fucking great. If anybody's listening to this and feels that way and feel like they don't have anybody to talk to, dude, fucking DM us. Yeah. So yeah. Let's talk. DM like, us. We have the email up on our Twitter page as well, I believe. Yeah, like, what, please yeah. feel free. Reach out. So, yeah, uh, the whole badge thing. And then after, so, the show floor closed at 6 p.m., uh, which is fucking ridiculous, in my opinion, for mm. for, for a Saturday. Yeah, you know that is. Um, yeah, it's weird. But um, they had an area where you could just go play old games if you want to. Kind of like a blockbuster kind of system. You go in, you rent a game, and you go to a TV, and you could play it for however long. So, me... Kyle, who asked the question, uh, our friend Nicole and Kelsey went to go do that just to kill time because we were going to go to a, a bar for a meetup at 8 p.m. So uh, we decided to play uh, some Mario Kart. Yeah, of course. Mario Kart 64, right? No, no Mario Kart 8. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, they only had they had Wii, Switch, uh, Xbox One, PS4. Sorry, Wii U, Switch, Wii Xbox U. One, PS4. Um, did that, uh, left the convention, went to the bar that we were going to do the meetup for. Um, and if you guys don't know Kyle or Kelsey, they do all like the East coast slash New York meetups for uh kind of funny. They found this bar and they organized it, put up a poster and whatnot. Uh, I shit you guys not. Do you know, like those scenes in movies where like the outsider walks in, the music stops and everybody just <laughs> fucking stares at you. <laughs> uh, fucking no joke. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Did you guys get there first, or we were? Yeah, we were the, out of like our people. Yeah, we were the first ones. Yeah, this was a sketchy fucking <laughs> unnamed biker bar, and that shit happened. And we just slowly walked out. We were like, <laughs> nope, not that, doing this. Okay, we're good. Nah, I I saw the um, uh, ch- change of plans. Uh, we'll yeah. let you know. <laughs> I was like, wait, so, what yeah, <laughs> we we scurried to the Burger King across the street and we're like, uh, OK, what are we going to do? <laughs> um, so, yeah, there was a bunch of tweets that were going on that I'm sure you saw. Yeah, I remember that in San Fran for Kind of Funny Life, too. Like you had to be on that Facebook page. Oh, my yeah. God. Know yeah. what was going on. Like I got into town and I was on there scurrying like, oh, we're over here. Oh, wait, no, we're here now. So I got the 20th yeah. Amendment bar. Yeah, like, oh, happens. no, we're not even there. We're across the street. I'm like. What? Right. So I downed my drink. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey! <laughs> so we found this other bar. I forgot the name of it, but it was more like a club bar. Like, the cranking fucking music. There's a yeah. DJ playing. It was fun. Oh. It was great. And they had, like, games and stuff. So we we ended up, like, drinking and playing Jenga. With tiny hands? Yeah. Zyger <laughs> found these tiny hands. I don't know if he got them at the convention or he bought them or stole them. I don't fucking know. But he just had these tiny hands that you just wrapped around his fingers. So yeah. it started out as like a sober, like, haha, this is cool. Uh, the more he drank, the more they like became a part of him. Dude, <laughs> dude, the story that uh, Greg posted on his uh, Instagram, like, you could just tell Zyger was gone. Just absolutely Fun gone. Fun fact, I'm the one that took that video. <laughs> <laughs> well, anytime there's a meetup, we usually try to like get Zyger drunk. Yeah, very good. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, that's true. PSX 2016 when he turned 21. Right. So it's just it's tradition at this point. We'll get to it, but Greg was fucking hammered. Also, he was like, "Hey, you know how to use an iPhone?" I was like, "Yeah, man, fucking give me the phone." <laughs> <laughs> so, the club was cool. It was fun, whatever. Right. Um, but it was like it was getting really packed, and uh, we knew Joey wants to meet up also. But they, she found a bar around the corner that was like way more our speed, super low key, mm-hmm. chill. You could sit at a table, get food, get drinks whatever it was really cool uh that place is called the buccaneer i believe or buccaneer or something awesome fucking wait staff awesome just bartenders awesome everybody so because i knew with us they were dealing with a lot because we were very loud obnoxious and drunk oh yeah so i was the first one that walked into buccaneer uh and joey and greg were there they were fucking awesome enough to come hang out for a very long time after like an incredibly long weekend i'm sure right um we just hung out we 
drank, we ate, we just laughed, we caught up, um, hung out until fucking like three o'clock in the morning. Um, you two know, but uh, I personally don't drink. Uh, mm, it's just, great. it's a personal choice. Greg bought 17 kamikaze shots for somebody's birthday. <laughs> oh my God. And when Greg Miller fucking hands you a shot, you have to you take ha- it. You have to, yeah. Wow. So I took a kamikaze that night. Uh, how, did, first, how was that? I'm 26 years old. That was my first shot ever. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not drinking anytime soon. I'm no, good. no, especially a yeah. kamikaze. Oh, yeah. I think it was fine. But like, nah, I'm good. No, no um, that's. As, as long as it wasn't the uh, was it the birthday shot, which is like supposed to taste like cake. Ugh. Oh yeah, no, fuck that. Ooh, it doesn't taste like cake. I, I was trying <laughs> drinks all night. Like Joey ordered some pineapple thing. Kelsey ordered something. They're, they're fine, but like, yeah, it's not for me. Whatever. We could get. No. Yeah, no, and yeah, you, you tried some of our drinks. I, last, yeah, I think the I think the last time I drank was PSX. Probably. Yeah, that was. I'm drinking right now. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by. Fort George from Astoria, Oregon. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, meetup meetup was fucking awesome. I, it's weird, not weird, but it's like bittersweet how much you miss somebody, like mm-hmm. these New York people or people that you met at KFL or PSX or anything, and you get to meet up and hang out for like one or two nights, like once or twice a year. I mean, like with fucking you guys. I don't know. I I just wish that's like that was more of a norm. <laughs> yeah, not to get sappy. Um, but anyways, we got back to the Airbnb around like fucking three, and my plan was to be up and out by like ten, which I knew was like pushing it because Kelsey was fucking gone. <laughs> uh, Kelsey, how, how is she when she's gone? <laughs> I was having a serious conversation with Greg and my friend Nicole, um, uh. and and so it was Greg like kind of in front of me, Nicole to my left, and Kelsey to my right. And I was having this serious, really serious conversation, which when we're off air, I'll talk to you about. And Kelsey kept saying, like, what? Are you talking about me? What are you guys talking about? I heard my name. You pointed at me. I was like, babe, no, you're, you're good. I'm like, it's cool. I'm like, well, I'm really trying to listen to this serious story. <laughs> no, that's that's me. My girlfriend doesn't get drunk. Yeah. So I, I have to be drunk for the both of us. So sometimes I get that way. The the best part was that night. So our Airbnb literally like the bed was probably up to her like up to her neck for some reason. <laughs> it was a really Jesus. tall bed. So like trying to get her on that bed when she's wasted was was a fucking struggle. But it worked. I mean she was a fucking trooper. Love her to there death. You go. Yeah. Um so I knew the ten AM plan was was going to be a stretch but sure shit we were both up and aware and all that shit by like 9 a.m like wow. no alarms it was great i felt great in the morning she felt great not hung over her elbow was hurting because she bashed her elbow trying to get onto the bed but whatever <laughs> um uh so yeah we left uh, you know we started has we had to check out the airbnb by 11 so i think we left at like i don't know 10 15 or whatever i get to the convention to try to get in without badges. Uh, the line is fucking massive at that point. I mean, it's the same thing with PSX. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's really crazy until, like, it kind of settles down a little bit, like, later in the day. I think you just walk in. We're online for, like, I want to say we're online for, like, 45 minutes to an hour. I mean, at that point, I was like, if this doesn't work, I'm going to be really pissed that we just killed, like, an hour, hour and a half or whatever, just waiting on this fucking line. But uh, we get up to security. I empty my pockets, all that stuff. Uh, I, I'm wearing a light hoodie, and I have the badge around my neck. I zip it up enough to cover where it says Saturday, but you can still see that I'm wearing a badge. Um, right. Kelsey does the same thing. And sure enough, we walk in. We're in. Wow. That's it. All right, kids. So if you're ever going <laughs> to a PAX show. <laughs> it was weird. I mean, I You bring I didn't a badge really... from last year. Yeah. Mm. So, to actually talk about PAX, like the main reason you go to PAX, Sunday was the day I got to play a couple games. So I played, let me count, because I, I can't count in my head. One, two, three, four, five. Six? I played five games. Well, played I, five, I saw six. six. Yeah. So I played, I well, let me go, is there questions related? Really? Nah, I can talk about it later, whatever. Um, I played I Hate Running Backwards by Devolver Digital. Uh. Kentucky Route Zero by Annapurna. Oh, I love that game. I never played it before this. Oh, it's so good. Donut County by Annapurna. Oh, I want that Dude. game. 
All right, we'll get into it. But yeah, uh, yeah Dono County, uh, Watam by Annapurna, and then Renane by Squidly. Uh, and then I saw, I was waiting online, but then I bounced because it was a little too long. Uh, I saw gameplay for Shovel Knight, King of Cards, like the card game gameplay. Like there's like a, a Hearthstone kind of game within. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and I, I actually tweeted at um, Yacht Games earlier this year. I'm like, hey, were you getting those Amiibos anytime soon? Because they were supposed to come out last uh, Their year. booth yeah. was, was like, fucking dope, and they had the Amiibos on display. They are uh, really cool, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. I think they're still like the like the first wave, right. just to yeah. check quality. But they said, no, we'll update you. I'm like, God. So I don't know, should I just go down this list and talk about them? Yeah, yeah. let's talk yeah. about them. So um, I hate running backwards. So like my main focus for packs going in, like I really wanted to hit up Devolver. And I really wanted to hit up Annapurna because Devolver and Annapurna just – Annapurna especially, like since they've moved more into games from films, like they just put out such mm-hmm. unique experiences. I hate running backwards is – it's like a an endless runner, sort of, where your your character is literally running backwards, and uh, like it's like a a shoot 'em up where enemies are coming from bo- like on the bottom of the screen, and you're constantly grabbing ammo and shooting people, just trying to survive and getting the best time. Uh, beautiful like three D ish pixel art, um, cool soundtrack. Uh, they have characters from other Devolver games, like uh, the little bullet from. Uh, oh fuck! I forgot the name of that game. Roguelike game. Fuck. I hate that term, by the way. I know. Let it be known. <laughs> well, it is a roguelike. Shut up. Roguelike. Uh, shit! I forgot the name of it. But they have they have characters from other like Devolver games, so it's like really cool. It, like a, it's kind of like their own version of Smash Bros. Huh. Co op. It was really fun playing with Kelsey. I think it's four player co op. Yeah, no, really cool. I'm super into it. I hope it comes to Switch. It's a seems like a perfect switch game, sharing Joy Cons and just playing around, seeing how long you can survive. Next is Kentucky Route Zero. Mm. I personally never played it. Um, I was excited that it got announced because I wanted to play it for a while. I, I think I put like four or five minutes into the demo. I was like, okay, I get it. I I rather go into this fresh. It's an adventure game. It's a it's like if you demo a Telltale game, like yeah. Nah. Except way better than the Telltale game. This game oozes style. Yeah, oh, it's fucking beautiful. I played it on Switch, undocked. Uh, it runs fucking mm-hmm. superbly. Wow. Look, looks beautiful on the screen. I, I can't wait to actually like dig into the game. I, It seems like it's something really special, especially because I don't really know anything about it. Right, and that's the best way to go into yeah, I did like the, um, it. Yeah, I did the, the opening screen. I think I was like, okay, I'm done. And I handed it to Kelsey. I was like, you, you can play this. You can try it out if you want. Yeah, and it's 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 uh, on PC, and I believe it is coming to consoles. It's coming to all consoles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my motherfucking game of the show. Oh, oh, my God. I can't wait for this one. Donut County. Game of the show! <laughs> Guys. Donut County uh, is fucking incredible. We got the pins at uh, I, I, PSX. I still didn't regret we? that yeah. I did not get that pin. Yeah, yeah. That pin is so. Oh you should have told me they were selling it. Uh, no, it's, probably, it's probably on their website. <laughs> yeah, I love that pin. Freaking raccoon with the donut. So yeah, if, if listeners don't know what Donut County is, it's literally reverse Katamari. Like you, you play as this <laughs> raccoon, but you're actually just a hole in the ground, and you just have to keep putting shit in the hole. Like you move the hole around to like bury stuff, if that's the term. Um, you get okay. shit in the hole, and your the hole keeps expanding, and you eventually just suck the whole world in underground. And and then like, so what I didn't see before this, like the trailer kind of like insinuates it, but the writing is fucking hilarious and incredible. And there's a cutscene for after every situation, like when you start burying. I'm gonna keep using that term because I don't know what else to say. <laughs> uh, when you keep burying stuff, and it's like the raccoon like saying like, "Okay, I don't know what's going on. I didn't mean to do this." Like. I'm sorry that I fucked up this guy's life. Like I just, I just wanted to help, and you just keep fucking ruining like the real, like the above ground world, and just yeah. bringing everybody underground, just getting stuck under there. Uh, it's so good. I cannot fucking wait. It, it's oozing in style. It's, it looks like um, if Night in the Woods was rendered in 3D. Uh-huh. Uh, that's a game I need to finish. Yeah, it's like a mix of Night in the Woods and like Virginia. If like Virginia's 3D aspects put to yeah. like the animal art style of night in the woods. Can I just say that that trailer, when we saw it at PSX, the first five seconds, you're like, what the, this is not, Yeah, seriously. You're like, what, it, what yeah, is this? Yeah. It's not going to be good. And then all of a sudden it's like, 
oh my god, this is hilarious. So the, <laughs> I the, need this in my life. The trailer is like the perfect example of the writing. It's like the trailer, yeah. they say that thing like, does it have a platinum trophy? Of course it has a platinum trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, it's like seriously one of my most anticipated games now. All like the demo ended, I I wanted to start it up again just to fucking experience that again. Right. It's so good. Do they have a release date for that? I think all these are just summer. So I I feel like one day it's just gonna drop. That felt like the most complete game that I was playing. Nice. Um, then I played Watam. Uh, <laughs> Watam is weird. I can't like, tell if it's good weird or bad weird. What what kind of game is yeah. it? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> Granted, I so I played Donut County, and then a booth opened up for Wadham, and I was like, hey, you go ahead, and I waited for somebody else. But then I realized it was a co-op game, so I jumped in like five minutes later, like after the tutorial stuff. You play on this empty space, uh, and you control different characters. Like you control, There's like a bunch of characters roaming around, kind of Viva Pinata-esque. Not animals or anything, but, like, just that kind of style. And you could control any character you want just to, like, fuck around and, like, wave to each other and say hi and make friends and whatever. And then there's eventually, like, tasks, like, I don't know, say hi to this person and go eat the square or, I don't know. It's like, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Eventually, me and Kelsey looked at each other, shrugged, and we're like, all right, let's let's move on. Mm-hmm. But I, I do want to give it, a, like, a fair shot. I, I might just pick it up because it is Annapurna. Uh, at this point, I do trust them. Right. We'll talk about that more later because we I got a we got a question about Wadham. Um, at this point of the convention, we uh, <laughs> we got spotted by a PAX person. He came up to me. He was like, "Hey, do you guys need a lanyard?" I was like, "No, I'm good." And at this point, I had the badge in my pocket with the lanyard hanging out, so it looked like I was like supposed to be there. <laughs> right. And the guy was like, "Yeah, well, so just so you know, like you have to wear the badge around your neck." I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." And he just stood in front of me for like. A solid 15 seconds waiting for me to put the badge on. I was like, huh, okay, you mean right now. <laughs> uh, so I slowly put the badge on and, like, quickly zipped up my hoodie before he realized, like, what the badge said. Uh, and then he walked away. And it was great. And I put it back in my pocket. So at this point, <laughs> me and Kelsey were like, all right, we need to start getting the fuck out of here before we get kicked out. Yeah. Um, but on the way out, we passed by uh, some more, like, actual, like, indie, indie shit. So... One of the games I actually stopped and played because nobody was really at the booth was Renane. It's by this developer called Squidly, I believe. Uh, it's a Kickstarter game. This game, it plays like Sonic. That's the best way I could put it. Huh. But it feels good. I love Sonic, but like it never felt good because you're always going too fast for the game. I feel like it wants you to play like Sonic, but a little slower. Like You, know, you don't just pass by enemies. You're like a little knight right. with a sword. There is an upgrade system, so you, like, stop, you swat enemies with the sword, you collect currency and stuff. You can just fly through the fucking levels, but there's more precise platforming in it. I put on the headphones, I was expecting, like, 8-bit style music. Um, Full fucking orchestration, like, this rock soundtrack. It sounded fucking awesome. Kudos to the one developer that was there. He he composed the entire soundtrack himself. But no, it looks really rad. It's like a 16-bit action platformer uh, some rpg elements upgrading your weapons upgrading your health all that stuff you know it's very like sonic mixed with shovel knight i'll say oh huh. yeah that that's what i want to say where there is like that upgrade system like shovel knight but with more sonic gameplay hmm. like literally like you go into the level and it's like ancient castle act one act two like it's very sonic in that sense but yeah it's really cool uh it's coming it reached this goal uh to come to switch i think it'll feel beautiful on switch uh sweet I backed it. I'm really stoked for it. That was all that I played, but the bonus thing that I saw was Shovel Knight, King of Cards. I was waiting online to play the, the card Hearthstone Gwent gameplay, but um, this guy was taking fucking forever, so I was like, ah, fuck this, let me just go. But it seems really cool. Uh, it seems, like, surprisingly deep. I think it's going to be used in really cool ways. It's just crazy how different each Shovel Knight quote-unquote expansion is. Like, this feels like it could be yeah. its own game put out the card game alone for like 10 bucks or whatever i feel like people will love it it'll make a killing it could be like it's full thing but the fact that it's this on top of like the regular shovel knight gameplay like the action platformer it's fucking incredible like i can't believe that they're still well, like, supporting this game like this and i love it but we're we're still supposed to get the battle mode too right uh, that's a thing i didn't even know about that yeah uh, well yeah i was in part of the original kickstarter and yeah there's supposed to also be a battle that's mode crazy. that's two players like, good on Yacht Club, man. Like, I, I think this is, other than the battle mode, if that's still happening, I think this is the last expansion that they're doing. 
Well, yeah, it's supposed to be like the last actual like story expansion. I don't know if they're doing the battle mode with it or if that's supposed to come later. But unless like the battle mode became this card game thing, mm-hmm. I don't know. But also something I'm not sure if you saw it PAX or not. Something I actually uh, emailed the the development team that actually working on this Shack Fu too. Uh, I did see it, but I didn't play it. I wanted to play it because I kind of want to buy it. Because supposedly it's coming out soon. Because Warrior sixty four leaked, like you know, it was supposedly on the store for a while and then it disappeared. It, but... it got officially announced. It's coming out in June. Okay, but as someone who backed this game, we haven't heard shit. Well, you backed it. Yes, of course you did. For that, <laughs> just for the T shirt. Because on the back it says we won't foo it up. Great. Oh, God. <laughs> it's been four years. Um, yeah, I was supposed to have early access to the game. Never got anything Great. like that. That's a good sign. Um, I, got the, I got the shirt. That's good. That's something. Um, yeah, so at this point it's like, uh, so am I still just getting a PC version? Because that was supposed to be the only version coming out. Uh, or, you know, can I switch this and, you know, get it on a different console that's what i'm kind of worried about with bloodstained because i originally backed it for ps4 but i want it on switch now but i i think i changed my thing to switch but i don't really know i don't know that i'm sure it's always weird that that dev team is actually you know on it like they're actually emailing every month if time you know two times a month so like i'm sure like if you uh message the kickstarter they're like oh yeah no probably we'll, we'll get this solved but um you know, that's that's all I really had time to play. And then, I mean, we left after we got the scare. We left, uh, grabbed food, and just killed time at the bus station. Made our journey home. Um, other things I did see that I really wanted to play, but I just there was the lines were massive. I didn't have time. Um, I really wanted to play Ashen from Annapurna, which is oh, that yeah. like Dark Souls like game, like co op yep. Dark Souls. Um, I think Xbox exclusive. Um. I really want to play State of Decay 2. Mm-hmm. With Game Pass, it's like, whatever, I don't need to wait on this line. I could just do Game Pass. and That's a whole another topic for another day. But Game Pass? I'll just say this going on record. I No, not Game Pass. State of Decay. I, I, I still doesn't... I don't get it. Like, I, I tried the original game, and the new game doesn't even look like a game that's coming out right now. It looks like a game that came out five years True. ago. I mean, I, I'm saving judgment for when I actually play it. But I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Um yeah, I mean, again, it was, like, super fucking rushed. I mean, we walked the show floor. I did a lot of shopping, like, mainly. Like, I mean, you guys know me. I'm a fucking impulse buyer. Like, I I picked up uh, I picked up the Plague of Shadows vinyl. I uh, <laughs> oh, picked yeah. up the Thomas Was Alone vinyl, which I wanted at PSX, but it sold out. Oh, I still oh, need to buy yeah. that. I forgot about Wait. that. Oh, wow. I think we all, yeah. did we yeah, all pick up volume that. at PSX? Yes, we did. Yeah, we we grabbed the last three, the last yeah. three. copies yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah and then yeah. they sold out if Thomas was alone. But yeah, they yeah. had it, so I jumped on it. I picked up Super Mario All Stars for SNES. Nice. <laughs> uh, I finally got my hands on Super Mario cereal. Did you try it yet? No, it, it's wrapped up and it's going to stay wrapped up because I paid ten dollars for yeah. it. Oh, oh, oh uh, I'm sorry. Dude. <laughs> hey, man, Did, fuck they, it, whatever. They, they have them in stock at my Target. <laughs> Well, yeah. you live in fucking Bumblefuck, California. I live in goddamn, like, right hey, New York City. Hey, Fresno is not... No, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it is. But, no, yeah, I, I even found it at my store in fucking Southern Oregon. Yeah. But, so... You know, I, I paid sticker price for it. But, yeah, that, that was pretty much PAX. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? I do. Because as someone who is now living on the West Coast, there's a lot of things that are opened up to me now. Yes. Where... I now have a chance to try PAX West as someone who's never even looked into PAX. Like, I hear yes. PAX this, PAX that. It's like, would you recommend going? Um, so I'm going to interject with a question that we got. Okay. Uh, so our friend Pixel Brave, one of my – I'm, I'm going to say this a lot, but again, one of my favorite fucking people in the world. No, I, I love Pixel Ugh. Brave. Christian is the fucking man. Uh, anyways, he asks, for someone like me who's never been to PAX East, what's it like? What do you enjoy most uh, and least about it? How does it compare to other PAXs? And he noted that he's only been to PAX South. Um, I'm going to rope all other conventions into this, or mainly PSX, because that's the only one I've ever been to. Um, compared to PSX, it's different. Uh, the fact that it's more opened and not, like, not one platform focused it gets right. overly crowded it doesn't feel as warm as something like psx 
because like I feel like the PlayStation community, since it's one community together, everyone's there for the same. Exactly, thing. everybody's there for the same thing. We all like the same thing. We could all talk about the same thing. You could just walk up to a random person and be like, "Oh shit, what did you think of Detroit? It's really cool. I love Quantic Dreams old games." Yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. Um, right. PAX is way more hectic. It's way more frantic. You oh, you constantly feel like you're in a rush. You constantly feel like you need to rush off the lines and stuff. There, this is gonna sound like kind of dickish, especially because it's, it's fucking video games, and it kind of should be this way. Uh, there's way more kids, which yeah, <laughs> I wasn't a fan of. Like, granted, it's it's a it's a video game convention. Of course, there's gonna be kids, but like, right. there's a lot of kids just like running around and stuff, and it was like kind of annoying. Yeah. Again, yeah. I know I sound like a dick in that sense, but like, I don't know. I, yeah. It was just it was different because I we never had that with PSX or anything. It was, it's mostly people like our age and stuff. It's almost all adults. Yeah. Right. So I never, I, for some reason that was like, it was so foreign to me that there was like kids running around. Yeah. Um, Especially PSX this year where they opened it up way more yeah. than the previous years. Like that too. Yeah. Uh, compared to PSX, PSX is way more comfortable. Like, yeah, you can actually walk around and like, you can take time to wait in lines for games and stuff. PAX is fucking packed. Like, unless it's gang beast. Unless it's gang beast. Looking at you, double fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I think my experience is a little jaded because I had this really weird trip. Like, I only bought a Saturday badge and I stuck into Sunday, so I didn't really do all the days. I would do it again. I, I want to do it next year, um, mm-hmm. but I'm I want to do all four days, uh, yeah. especially Thursday. Thursday was apparently completely dead, and I I really regret not going on Thursday. Um, my favorite part about PAX is though, like finding something like Renane. Like, there's just legit indies over there that have no developer, no publisher. I'm no developer. Uh, that have no publisher, <laughs> no funding. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's stupid. Self aware indies. Um, <laughs> and that, in that sense, it's really fucking cool that you could just find this random ass Kickstarter game that you've never heard of and can get in on the ground floor and just try it out and yeah. actually talk to these devs and stuff. Um, so, in that sense, I fucking love it. But that. That's something I. That's what I want to feel like, or want to see, or enjoy. Like yeah. thinking about a PAX West, because I'm like, as much as I love PSX, you, you can't go around doing everything that you want. So right. you have to limit what you do. And there's like some smaller games that I would have loved to try it out, but yeah. you wanted to try the bigger games as well. So that's also the cool thing about PAX. Also, it's so like in a way where my plus about PSX is just very PlayStation focused and it's like everybody's there for the same thing. Uh, a plus about PAX at the same time being a negative thing, but more of a plus thing is that you will play, you will find switch indies. You will find PC indies. You will find Xbox indies. Like everybody's there. Mm-hmm. So you're not just constricted to things that are only stuck on PlayStation, which is nice. Right. Yeah. Um, like this Renane game, I, I think it's just PC and Switch. Touching on what Jake said, funny thing about this uh, last PSX, I played more games there than I did the year before. Oh, yeah. Oh, me too. Because I usually, I usually only go to PSX to hang out with you guys. Um, so, like, last year, like, I was, like, hanging out with you guys, and I was at the MLB bar. That was all I was doing last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but the MLB bar is fucking dope. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. The, there's a fucking bar at a game convention. And, like, yeah, we actually all hung out there and left... Uh, this last a little one. Easter egg for I, our our listeners. Uh, the main picture that's drawn on for three best friends is where we took our picture at the MLB. Yeah, bar. Mm-hmm. It's crowded we're on a two on, on a two seated couch. That, that was two and a half. <laughs> no, not for us. Well, I'm like one <laughs> and a half men. So, <laughs> um, you yeah, know, to, to answer Pixel more directly, I, I haven't been to any other PAXs. Um, Something I can't really talk about yet, but I might be going to PAX Prime. Um, I may or may not be working on something that might get submitted for PAX Prime. So I might go. Where's that at? Well, that PAX, PAX, PAX Prime is in Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that, that's oh. the main one. Oh, okay. So <laughs> more to come uh, eventually. Uh, Wait, so I might see you at PAX? Maybe. Again, huge Dude. maybe. We'll, we'll see. Dude. We'll see where we're going. Um, I get. I might get to see you three times this year. Yeah, right. So yeah, uh, I can't really compare it to any other PAXs. I'd imagine that PAX Prime, PAX West, is way more crazy since it's the main one. I'd imagine PAX South is more chill. Um, but yeah, it was cool though. 
I, I definitely want to do it again next year. Um, the one thing I didn't mention, just to like bring this topic full circle from how I started it, uh, Boston fucking sucks. <laughs> Boston, <laughs> dude, like it's a bootleg Philly. I had no fun just like roaming around trying to navigate the city. It fucking sucks. There's like certain <laughs> things of Boston I liked, but it was never something cheers. I never wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's never a place I ever want to go back to again. I guess it's just in my blood. I guess. <laughs> no, no, as someone who lived in New York and not even not even in New York City, I didn't like Boston. Yeah, but I uh, I I I love New York City, but also. I mean, I, no offense to your girlfriend, Mike, but I hate New Jersey. Oh, uh, everybody hates New Jersey. Yeah, it is. It's fine. New Jersey is the butt of every joke. Yeah. New Jersey is the toilet of New York, unfortunately. Great, right, she's in like the nicer part of New Jersey, which is great. Right. But like now, like Jersey City and shit. No, nah, oh, no, yeah. yeah, no. No offense to any listeners in New Jersey, we love you, but I'm pretty much a New Jersey person, also. So whatever. <laughs> I almost thought I offended you in one text when you're like, I have to go to New Jersey for the weekend. I'm like, ew, why? And you're like, I have to visit Kelsey. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, won't, um, I won't say anything bad. Well, we're currently working on uh, getting her to New York, so. Woohoo. Woohoo. VA love. Um, <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it more expensive to live in New York? Uh, Depending on where you go. Yeah. Like Manhattan is pricey as fuck brooklyn is really well, pricey no shit. at yeah. least right now i mean they're gonna <laughs> brooklyn's probably gonna drop once they shut down the l train but um yeah well you guys got anything else for me for packs um what is your favorite pin that you got because <laughs> i saw all oh, the ones fuck. that you got that shovel knight one is really sick uh, yeah 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 I, it's really I sick shovel knight one too <laughs> um they give out a lot of free like free buttons at least uh Right. I stopped by, as you guys know from PSX, I, I'm obsessed with Limited Run. Limited yeah. Run. I, yeah. So I grabbed, so they just had like a fucking barrel full of pins. I grabbed like fucking 10 of them, like all you different have, styles. They're all so yeah. fucking sick. Yeah, you have five of them. One of them, like my favorite one is like the old school uh, TV screen. Yeah, that one's sick. Look, oh. Uh, I love that, that one. one. I love the, the white like graffiti one. Oh, they're so cool. Yes. I still haven't opened Next Machina. I haven't either. I'm not going to. I haven't opened Next Machina. I haven't opened uh, the Vita one that we got the first year. Munch's Odyssey? Abe's Odyssey? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and that was, that was the last thing I bought, actually, on the way out to PAX. I picked up uh, the Bit Trip collection from them because they had a PAX exclusive. Um, nice. Which I'm not going to open. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyle got me a... Uh, it's from that Y2K game that's coming out. Oh, I want to play yeah, that. Th- so, so that's bad. another one I really want to play. Um, but I didn't even see it. But yeah, the the Y2K pin is a it's a character with a, a record. And he was like Kyle's like, Yeah, this is you, so here, have it. I was like, Fuck yeah, dude, I love you. Yep. <laughs> um It's you with hair. Pretty yeah, me with hair. Uh... <laughs> um and uh Y2K reminded me the other one I really wanted to play was uh which was like the talk of the show for all my friends, uh Russian dumpster dogs or some shit like that. <laughs> have you guys heard of this? No, no. Uh, I gotta find the actual name of it. Fucking vamp. I for like a that name. That that that's the name now. That reminds me. I need to see the new uh, Wes Anderson. Oh, movie. fuck! So it's so good. Gone to see that. That's what I've been hearing. Uh, <laughs> great. Googling Russian dumpster dogs doesn't really do shit. <laughs> 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 fuck! I forgot the name of this game. I don't know it's some. It's something to that extent. I didn't play it. I know nothing about it. Uh, but apparently, it's fucking incredible. And like just That's absolutely awesome. absurd and ridiculous, but uh, yeah, I'll, maybe next week I'll find it. I'll talk to you guys about it. Side note: I have a um, little surprise at the end. Remind me about it. You, you probably should have just wrote it down on the notepad. <laughs> oh, oh no, I have it. I have it written down. I'm just trying to remember it. Okay, just have, just have it on your screen. No, it's so, on my screen now. <laughs> so, I guess to end this segment, we did get a couple of packs related questions from our beautiful brand new community. That formed an you, you hour. You say ago. beautiful because the first one is your girlfriend. Your girlfriend but <laughs> technically, the first one I wrote down is Pixel Brave, so that's why I'm calling it beautiful. And yeah, he's beautiful. He's your girlfriend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, uh, Miss Kelsey Lewis writes in and says, "What was your favorite game that you played and saw? Why was that? <laughs> why was that one really weird game? Super weird. What was the objective? Why did the poop want to explode? Uh, she's talking about Wadham." Yeah, at some yeah. point you become yeah. right. No, I picked up on that. You, you become you. So you eat like you eat the squares, 
and you you poop out and you become little like poop emojis and they're like crying and you talk to them you get close to them and you talk to them and they're like i just want to be with my friends and explode and this this is like shouting out to be a title card <laughs> yeah for this episode yeah <laughs> dude i game is fucking weird man again i don't know if it's bad do i don't I know if it's good it's just fucking weird <laughs> And I, I'm I'm into it. I'm gonna give it a shot, but no idea what the fuck was going on. So <laughs> sorry, Kelsey, for not clearing that shit up. So between cocktail and Wadham, we have really two interesting things to take in. Yeah. Um I mean that's that's two commentaries, man. <laughs> yeah. Brent Johnson writes in. Another one of my favorite people in the fucking world. Yes. Uh, amazing person. How much does PAX focus on games in comparison to something like PXX? Also, what was the best thing you saw there? Um Donut County. Fuck yeah. Um, Donut County. Yeah, we touched on this a little bit. PAX focus on, like, the focus on games, like, that's all it is. It's all yeah. games. Right. Like, granted, right, so you do shop around. There are, like, vendors and stuff there that you can buy, like, t-shirts and pins and whatever. Well, there's panels, too. Yeah, and that, too. There's a ton of panels. Like, I was, like, I knew that was very panel-focused, but I didn't realize how much was there. And it's not even things like behind the scenes of this big game or Ubisoft talks Assassin's Creed not like well right no like one of the biggest one and ones that one talked about in our circles at least was how there might not be another Greg Miller PAX panel because they almost got shut down for people taking off shirts yeah. so yeah I mean there's like ridiculous shit like that but then there's things like to take this panel and there's things like how to market yourself and how to promote yourself how to be a content uh-huh. creator it's really fucking cool that's that's like another reason I really wish I went all, more days because I didn't realize it was really like that. Yeah, I mean, especially now with us starting this thing, it would have really helped. Oh yeah, it seems more like a it's like a fan event, but also like a quote unquote industry event in the sense that like yeah. it's a good like motivational piece to like actually start out like your own YouTube channel or Patreon or whatever. Like it's very motivational in that sense. But you know, I mean, other than that, though, the, f- the focus is games. I mean, the show floor is packed, f- like, fucking end-to-end with just games. Like, Xbox had a really big booth. Um, Nintendo had a packed fucking booth. Nintendo was showing a lot. Well, yeah, Nintendo is now focusing, you know, a lot on their Nindies. It, it, they didn't even really show Nindies there. I mean, they were showing their uh, Wolfenstein was playable, Crash was playable, uh, Dark oh. Souls was playable, Donkey Kong. Like, they had a lot over there. Oh. It was crazy. I think Mario Tennis was playable. Is it just me, uh, or is, is it going to be weird for Crash to be on Nintendo? Like, no, I can't fucking wait. You kidding me? Not, uh, I think we've passed the point. After Sonic was the first weird part. Yeah, that's true. You're saying Crash is weird, but you're not saying shit about Dark Souls? I mean, Spyro's going to be on Xbox One, I think. Yeah, it is. That's, I, it got leaked out for Switch okay. also. I mean... That was the weird thing about the Spyro announcement, how it's just on PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah, like, well, it got leaked out for Switch. We'll probably down the road get, like, PC and yeah. Switch, but... Right. Um, yeah. It's just weird that they focused on that first. I mean, remember a long time ago, Kingdom Hearts 3 was announced on Xbox One as well, and it's like, that was that was a weird one, too, and it's just like... I think at this point, like, you know, and we're still running across those people they are like, oh, this is bullshit, like, why is it on this system? No, this isn't okay, it was on my system, like... Yeah, chill yeah, the chill fuck, the fuck yeah. out, man. Like, you you can't have it on one console anymore, really, unless you're like the sole developer for. Or if like you're you're throwing tons of money at someone for a time exclusive. Yeah, exactly. But, like that that's the only way. It's like these companies need money in order for their games to succeed now, and so they need to be on yeah. all these consoles. So you know, out of the big three that didn't really have like a huge presence, and this will be kind of a a segue into the next question. Uh, PlayStation didn't really do much. Um, PlayStation right. was just showing off Detroit. Uh, it was it was the demo that we played back at PSX, the uh, Connor demo. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that being said, uh, my friend Dave, he says, are there too many gaming conferences? It almost seems unnecessary with how many we have. So I, I have to say no. So uh, I, yeah. I break this but. down into two parts. Press conferences, like press events and stuff? Yes. Yes. But actual conferences that people could go and play games? No, I don't think so. Wait, 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 wait. How is there too many press conferences? Uh, <sighs> I think with Sony, for example, like how we didn't get a PSX because they had a big E3 and Paris Games Week. Like, they could have cut Paris Games Week. Yeah, what's the point of doing Paris Games Week? Yes, you. I mean, granted, you are going over to the EU yes. where you don't really visit yeah, much. Not, this, so that's... Not, to, not to talk shit about everyone in Paris. No, what's no, the no, point no of, of course not. No, 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 no. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just why bring everything over to the EU and then you have this exclusive PSX where you should be showing off and granted, the newer like, stuff. They did show stuff off at PSX. I mean, we got that Wipeout announcement. We got Medieval. We got like a few things that Donut County trailer. And yeah, stuff. Donut County. Yeah, but like I. Feel like it's sh- I don't know like they just showed off way too much throughout the year that like yeah save some stuff for yourself yeah I um, wonder what this PXX is gonna be like because all the big games that were announced last year should be out except yeah. he's gone of course the yeah. thing the thing about that though is like we're only talking about three or four studios um, from Sony alone about that's coming out this year. Yeah. And how many studios do they have under the roof? Like, oh no, totally. Well, like, how many shows were there where they just kept showing the same things over and over and over again? You know, right. granted, like yeah. I, I want to see more. Like, I, like, I love seeing Patapon Two. Like, we got to play that at PSX. That's, like, that was totally under the radar. Nobody said anything. Thing. We about got to that. play it, but they didn't show it. Right? They didn't even like really announce it. Right. Yeah. So it's like Patapon Two is going to come out soon, yeah. um, which has me hoping for you know a remaster of. Parappa too, oh, God. and you guys will hear me lose my shit again. Yeah, our fucking yeah. first PSX together, fucking losing our fucking. Yeah. Oh my that God! Shit. Yeah, yeah. If anybody had a camera close to that, you would hear me just yell out, "What?" <laughs> I remember that too. And then same thing with Xbox. Like their E3, they fucking kill it at E3, and then they promise a big Gamescom, and then like last year, their Gamescom was fucking not great. No, it's, yeah, it's I like think... just just stick with one thing. Like do your fan events. Like have people come and play the games, yeah. but like you don't need to publicize everything. Like you don't have to hype up everything. Like even with their new uh, their new show that they're doing monthly, I guess. Um, I watched the first one. It was mainly just Sea of Thieves focused. I'm like, don't really need that. No. And great, this last one that they did last month, they did all the backwards compatibility stuff. It's fucking great. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. And like I saw the new list of backwards compatibility games. That's it's great. Fucking great. Yeah. But like I feel like that would have got a massive pop at E3. Oh yeah. 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 I-, I will say this. I don't think Sony needed to be at E3 last year. E- their their E three showing was kind of lackluster. Like again, it was stuff that we've all seen before, except for Shadow. I think that was the only new thing, right? Yeah. Unless I'm missing something. Like they had this weird like days gone, like there's zombies hanging. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It just yeah, it, it felt very weird from the year before. There was no talking. It was just trailers and stuff. That, like I, that. Don't mind. I feel like they didn't have to have. Uh, yeah. Right, but it's like they didn't have to have a press conference. They could have just put those charters out in the yeah. wild. Yeah. It's... So, I, like, to speak to that point, like, okay, yeah, that didn't need to be there. That wasn't a press uh, press conference. That was just, um, ah, crap, I forget his name, but he was just out there announcing the next trailer. Sean Lee? Yes. Mm-hmm. Bethesda kind of did the same thing also, which, again, with Bethesda, I thought it worked very well. Um, Xbox is like... Bethesda killed Beth- it Bethesda year. always kills it, it seems like. I'm I'm so curious about this year. Which I feel like we said last year. I, I can't wait for us to do our E three predictions because there's a yeah. Lot. Last year I was like, what, what does Bethesda have to show? Like, why oh, are they doing yeah. another E three thing? And they're like, oh my god, that Wolfenstein trailer. God, Fuck me. So good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like the only like true pe- press conference anymore is from Xbox. Like they actually put on a show. Yeah, um, and and it's always fun. It's always great watching. Most most, most of the time. Most, most of the time. time. Yeah. yeah. Granted, <laughs> yeah, some of it is. There's just some like, years oh. where like they had the Connect games and like, oh my god, look at the water when they had like the Connect like uh, whatever sports or whatever, and they were on Ugh. the raft, and the dudes were like, look at the water. I'm like, oh. well, I feel like more recently in the Phil Spencer era, it's been he's he's, he's trying, trying to undo yeah. all the wrong. Yeah, you know? so with with Xbox Two or whatever the fuck's gonna be called, I they're gonna <laughs> fucking kill it. They need to call it fucking Xbox Two at I know. this point. <laughs> The only people that have been really killing it with like the quote unquote conferences, like the multiple conferences a year, is Nintendo lately. Yeah, yeah. and they haven't even been going to the show and doing a traditional no. press conference. Right. Like, how many directs have we gotten already this year? Three. Yeah. yeah, and all of them have been fucking awesome. And we're we're not even halfway through the year yet. You you don't set your expectations up too high for yeah. a Nintendo direct, but they deliver. Yeah. They're like the reason I look forward to uh, GDC so much now because they always put out that Nindy's uh, direct, right? Right, and it's always like so fucking cool and so packed with announcements. Mm-hmm. The only one, the only one I was bummed about was uh, for this last round of GDC ones was uh, No Hollow Knight. Even though before the uh, before the direct, the devs uh, Team Cherry announced that they weren't gonna do anything for Hollow Knight for the direct. But God, I want that game so badly. I know. <laughs> I know. There's so many games out there that we're just waiting for. It's just I know. I but. for the first time I actually 
watched Hollow Knight gameplay, I didn't realize it was like a Dark Souls Bloodborne like. Yeah. Like that there's like lanterns and shit. It's fucking awesome. I still need to go through Bloodborne. That's it. You do need to it's, go through Bloodborne. It's I I need to get past that initial part where it's like, all right, I know I'm weak. Well, I yeah, can get past this. Like I said, but, I, I said to you personally, like, it's going to kick your ass for a couple hours. Oh, yeah. Like, it's supposed to and, kick your ass for a couple hours. And it's just lately, like, I, I don't have the mentality to just keep getting my ass kicked and keep getting my ass kicked, even though I play Fortnite. But <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I had to bring it up at least once. This just is, once. It's twice, actually. Oh, it is. It is. Definitely is. But <laughs> are, are you going to get the uh, Dark Souls remastered? I don't think so, because I'm not really a big fan of that whole genre. Like, I like Bloodborne because it is faster paced right. than Dark Souls. I was thinking about getting Neo until I played it, and it was just... It, it seemed, like, harder than Bloodborne. <laughs> like, I was getting... Oh, it's, it's, it's definitely, definitely harder. harder. Yeah. Um, yeah. That game is so good, though. Yeah. But, I, like, I, I liked what I played at PSX, and I was just like, oh, oh, I'm getting spanked. I am this game's bitch. <laughs> I did pick it up recently on, like, whatever the last sale it was on. And, uh, yeah, the game kicks your fucking ass. Yeah. I I, I yeah, might like, go back um, to it. We'll hit, see. But, like, um, kind of. Well, hit um, myself or uh, my friend Jared up because, he, like, he's even further ahead than I am. But you can have somebody who's already done the levels help you mm-hmm. out. And it's mm-hmm. it's a huge help. It's it's almost to the point where it was, like, a Diablo 2 rushing mm-hmm. Where you had somebody who already uh, beat the game just running you through right. it. But yeah, I'm currently it'll help you out. Currently a lot. stuck on like the second or third boss, I guess Spider Lady. Oh yeah, yeah. no yeah, just hit me up. I'm glad to play that because yeah. I still need to play more of that game. Cool. Our final question comes from uh, what was his name? Jacob Palmer. Um, oh oh uh. But this question really came from someone else. To be fair, it I, came from everyone. Who saw the preview video? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why have you never seen the Goonies? Uh, I purposely put this. So, if you guys don't know, we put up a, a teaser video today to like announce the actual podcast. And I mentioned that I've never seen the Goonies. I don't know. It just never happened. My my Why? my gap in eighties films are just like non-existent. You, you, to like, be I, fair, I you just did, you did I, right or wrong. I did right or wrong. So recently, for the first time ever, I just watched Back to the Future, all three of them, during a a marathon at Alamo. That's the thing. If Alamo shows Goonies, I'll fucking go. I'll be the first one to buy his tickets. Just rent it and watch it. (laughs) But that's that's too difficult. (laughs) That's that's harder. Yeah, for some reason. I mean, like, dude, fucking Back to the Future has been free on, like, Prime for fucking years now. And it took me to pay fucking thirty dollars for a trilogy marathon to go see right it. yeah like i don't know there's just, something just there's watch something it. about that I, like, i'd rather see it in theaters yeah no i agree i um, like for yeah i would too but mike <laughs> just watch it like for example the first time i saw that movie it was on vhs on actually, a, like fucking like 22 inch tv like at 4-3 ratio just watch it yeah it might uh, so it's fantastic. Same thing with the the theater thing, and let me preface this by saying I've seen this movie multiple times. I'm just gonna throw that out there right now. Uh, Alamo's doing the Sandlot. I want to go. Oh my so god! Bad. Oh. oh my god! Okay, uh, I love that yeah, movie. So such a great bad. movie. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I will. I I will admit something. Mike, if they're doing any special posters or anything, they're doing. Play, they're doing it, hats. I will pay you for it. Baseball caps. Ooh. I will pay you for it. I. Buy me one. Uh, okay. I'll see. I'll Mike, see if I can get it. What's up? Here, here's a question for you. Yes. Have you ever seen The Princess Bride? No. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to admit that I had never seen this movie up until 2012, 2013, I believe, and I finally saw it. It was in a. It was in a like a old fashioned theater, and they played it on the old film strip, yeah. which was amazing. I loved it, Mike. Yeah, but Mike. <laughs> Watch that before Goonies. <laughs> Whatever you say, man. Like, especially now more than ever, like <sighs> HBO's doing their Andre the Giant uh, documentary that's coming out here soon. Watch that movie. Oh w- would God. you like to point out more 80s films? Do we keep, like, a quick rapid fire to wrap this up? God, I, don't, no. I don't want to because it's going <laughs> to hurt. It's going to hurt. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, never seen. <sighs> 
I'm sorry for the people who are listening. This is going to be the sound of me dropping the mic and the headphones and walking away from this podcast. Uh, okay. Weekend at Bernie's. Never saw. <gasps> that's fine. No, that's, fine. that's not fine. I, I'm not taking offense to that. Oh, from Jake, I'm, uh, I'm taking offense for that one. That's a good one. Caddyshack. Never saw. What? <laughs> uh, Matt. Dude. <laughs> I've never seen it either. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That shit was on Netflix for so long. It might even still be on there. Just watch the movie. Bro, the office is on Lulu? Netflix, dude. I have to watch it a few more times. Oh, oh, I'm going to make you and Kelsey mad. Fuck off. Ra- Rachel Rachel and I do not like The Office. Ooh. Okay, so have you What? <laughs> no, first off, I agree with Matt. I agree with Matt. It's a, it's one of the best shows ever made on fucking television. Uh, have you tr- got past the first season? Yes. Okay. Like I got, Fuck. I got up until like season three, and I think mm. I stopped because it just, I, I think I just, uh, maybe I got into season four. I don't know, but mm. um, she, she, she can't get past season one. Um, so you shouldn't watch season one of that or Parks. No, and Rec. here's so, the thing: we love, we love Parks and Rec, so we thought we were gonna love The Office. And it's like funny you say that. I hate Parks and Rec. See. So, See, we're, we negate each other. We're fine with each other. We're at peace. And I hate both of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that, that's why. I've never seen it. Okay. You know what? So how many... This week, I'll so, watch it. And we'll talk about it next week. Please, I doubt it. Please, please do. I doubt it. <laughs> we'll see. Princess, Princess Bride before Goonies. Goonies is great. Yeah. And, like, it is filmed in my home state. But Yes. Princess Bride first. Yes, Princess Bride first. Okay. So remember, I had an announcement to make while filming this podcast. I went on uh, BioWare's website and bought the uh, Mass Effect uh, vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it was fifty bucks. It was fifty bucks, man. <laughs> Wait, fifty? That's fucking half off. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a four LP. Yeah. Uh, it has Mass Effect one through three. Yeah. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Oh uh, my god. Fifty dollars as in it was originally a hundred? Yes. Yep. How is that more expensive than the fucking Last of Us one? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know but le- I did not want to pay a hundred dollars for it. Does I Shepherd was suck at this. your fucking dick? Like No. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. No. Well yeah. Apparently there's just haters for the Mass Effect. Thing. I see. I'm not a hater. Oh, I'm just like, whatever, man. Alright, so let's let's, let's wrap the shit up. So I wanna end each week by uh pretty much talking about what we're looking forward to watching, listening to, playing, reading, whatever for this upcoming week. Um, well, I think the big one for all three of us is God of War is coming out on a Friday. God he, of War. Yes. As someone who really wasn't a fan of God of War when it came out, I'm really excited for this one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have a lot to say about the series as a whole next yeah. week. But yeah, no, we're all going to play God of War. We're going to play the fuck out of it. I, I took off work for that reason. That night, the night of God of War coming out, I'm going to uh, Jeff Rosenstock show. Mm. I, I mentioned him earlier. If you guys never heard of him, please go check him out. Worry is a modern masterpiece. Saturday is Record Store Day, where I lose all my money. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thursday, and I don't know if you guys realize this is coming out already. Thursday, I'm seeing motherfucking Super Troopers 2. Oh I did not my know goodness! That was coming out. Wow! Can I, is it going to be a good movie? No, but I can't no, fucking wait. No. See, um, that's the problem. Like, I love one. Yeah, I absolutely love one. I just don't know if two is even going to come close. I can't wait. And the last thing I'm looking forward to for this up, or yeah, by the time this posts, this upcoming weekend uh, on Sunday, uh, my girlfriend Kelsey is doing uh, a Twitch benefit stream. Um, all proceeds are going to uh, MS. Uh, we're in a couple of weeks. We're doing a walk to uh, raise money for MS. That's gonna be on twitch.tv slash Kelsey Lynn ten thirty one. If you follow us on Twitter, I'll we'll post the link and stuff. Um, I'm gonna be with her. Uh, I'm gonna play some stuff with her. Probably I'll probably appear on it. I mean, it's mainly her show. I don't want to like take over or anything. But you should go follow oh. her, support her, support this incredible cause. Um, I think the three of us might jump on Fortnite with her also. She has a ton of movies and games to give away. Like, she told me the list. It's, like, really expansive, so it's, that's kind of exciting. So, uh, yeah, that's twitch.tv slash Kelsey Lynn 1031. Again, we'll tweet it. We'll post it, all that stuff, uh, just so you don't miss out on it. 
Uh, that's awesome. all I got. All right. Well, like you, I'm waiting for God of War to come out, and I, I'm really excited about that one. Just being something that's like I was never really into the God of War series before, but this one looks like more, more like I can care about the main character because right. the other ones I'm just like he's just yelling and is a brute and just killing, like whatever. Sex. Yes. Okay. Yes. And sex. And blood. Right. <laughs> Matt? So, f- yeah, for me, um, I'm really looking forward to next week because of God of War, and I can't wait to delve so much into just, you know, how much I hate that series as a whole and how I bought all the games and played through <laughs> them just to have a valid opinion about those games. So th- that's going to be a fun episode, at yeah. least for me. Um, otherwise, um, you know, I'm playing Stardew Valley. Oh, so nice. <laughs> Oh, that's still going wait, on. Wait, you didn't tell me this. So I'm still waiting the multiplayer update, which should be sometime this year. Yes. Um, other than that, um, when I actually have days off, I'm playing, replaying the Mass Effect series. Nice. So nice. But uh, yeah, next week the big, the big okay. thing is got a war. Yep. And with that being said, this has been Three Best Friends episode one. Uh, I am Mike Townjo. You can find me personally at Tjo1214. Thank you, Matt. Where can we find you? I was hoping I was going to go last because I'm going to do a very obnoxious yell well, out at the end. But um, Jake, where can we find I'm you? Matthew. Nope. You <laughs> fucked you it can, up, right? You can, fi- <laughs> you can find me on most platforms, JakeP47, uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. I do some stuff there. Uh, but yeah, mainly there. And just a shout out to all the people that sent in questions. Thank you. Yes, seriously. Appreciate thank it. you. Christian, Love Kyle, you. Dave, Kelsey, Brent. Like, yeah, thank you. Seriously. And Matt. So you can find me at Shibs42 on Twitter. That's S-H-I-B-B-S 42. Um, yeah, shout out to our friends and family, everyone who is already supporting us. That's very awesome of them. I'm very happy that, you know, everyone's... It's another podcast. Who has time for another podcast, yeah. right? But thank you. Um, and yes, the last thing I wanted to yell out was 